Hi friends. It looks like I'm live, but um, I have no idea where I put my phone. Okay, well, that's okay. I'll just hopefully be able to see the comments on my computer because um, I must have left my phone in a different room. <laughs> I am 12 noon, 100% snuck up on me. Um, so I'm a little, a couple minutes behind. So I apologize for that. And it looks like I must have left my phone in a different room. So thankfully my computer is pretty much uh, set up in front of me. So I should be able to see a good portion of your comments when I can. Oh, thank you guys. I know everyone's names are different colors. It's really strange. <laughs> that must be an interesting little update that YouTube must have done. All right, anyway, uh, welcome friends. Uh, my name is Leah and it's been a couple of weeks since I have been live with you. So I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm gonna be uh, using one of our new stamp stencil and die sets today called Inky Bouquet. It is a really fun, it's a beautiful floral set. It's, it's really kind of different from a lot of the, um, a lot of the um, bouquet type things you see out there. So really excited about that. Interesting. So it looks like some people aren't seeing it, the different colors. So it makes me wonder if it's just an, an owner thing because Heather and I are both um, managers and owners on this. So very interesting. Um, all right. So uh, we have a bit to do today. So we should probably get going. I'm not pointing today. We're sticking with stamping. I'm gonna do some heat embossing, of course, stenciling and die cutting. Um, so it should be fun. Um, and I'm excited to get started. So before I flip this camera around, first off, if you're new, welcome. We're so happy that you found us and we hope that you enjoy what you see and we'll keep coming back. Um, once I flip the camera around, I don't see as many comments. So, but Heather is my partner in crime. She's the person posting under the Pink Press Studio name in the comments. And she pretty much catches most everything that I miss. Now, if you leave a question and we both miss it, we probably just didn't see it. Sometimes the comments really fly. And so we may have been replying to something else as it came through and we just missed it. So um, feel free to ask again, but also, um people inside of the comments are also really good about answering questions that they know the answer to as well um we give away a 15 dollars gift card code at the end of every live so all you have to do is uh, do what you're currently doing chat with us in the chat leave comments ask questions chat with your fellow crafters that are hanging out with us this is meant to be social as well as crafty so and then also a way to gain an extra entry is underneath the video somewhere there's an arrow and it says share next to it if you hit that share button uh you can share a few different ways you could share it directly to your facebook page you could share it uh the link in a crafty message if you have like a message or an email or a dm string with fellow crafters you can share it there so hopefully they can come join us um you are also free to share it in like a crafty facebook group but just make sure that it follows the rules there are some crafty groups that don't like that so make sure that you know the rules come back here let us know that you shared and that's an extra entry now one thing that's not an extra entry but that we absolutely love um for you to do to help us is to give this video a thumbs up it helps the reach uh currently like right now while it's live but also on the replay in hopes that we'll find um other crafty people or people just, you know, kind of starting to get interested in crafting or wanting to learn more about it. And so those thumbs up buttons really help the reach. So we really appreciate that. All right, I think I've gone over everything I needed to go over. So I am going to flip this camera around and we will get going today. Hopefully I'm not a hot frazzled mess. I know there's some things that I didn't grab out that I'm gonna have to grab. So you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit today. All right, we've got that switched over. And I'm just waiting for it to catch up on YouTube. I just wanna make sure 
Um, everything looks okay on YouTube. All right, yeah, I think that looks fine. Okay, friends. So today, uh, here are the things that I plan on using today. We are going to use the inky bouquet, all three pieces. I'm gonna also use a sentiment from it. Um, we're gonna use the new spiral circle die, of course, because I'm obsessed with it. And then um, I, I did the pre-cutting on this, but I am just going, um, uh, the backgrounds are just cut with the largest stitch rectangle. So I just thought I would share that here as well. Um, but I did pre-do all of that die cutting just to save us a little bit of time. So we are going to start uh, by heat embossing. So I don't often do it this way live, but I really wanted to see this. Sorry, I'm grabbing my Misty. So I might've, my audio might've changed. I really want to see how this image looks heat embossed in white and then doing the, uh, that that's better that way. And then doing the stenciling. So what I'm going to say is it might be a little bit harder for you guys to see the image until after it's fully ink blended, but I think it's going to be a really lovely modern feel. Um, and so I really wanted to do it today um, just to see how that looks. So you might have to bear with me a little bit um, when I'm heat embossing it in white because it probably won't show up perfectly well, but I think it's going to be a really lovely, uh, I just think with the colors I chose, it's going to look really, really nice embossed in white. Okay, so we are just getting that into our Misty. And then I am going to prep my cardstock with some uh, my anti-static powder tool. Get nice and generous on here. And let's go ahead and ink it up. Today, uh, well, I always use the WOW embossing pad. Um, I feel like I just get the best results with this embossing ink. There's a ton of, of embossing inks out there. And I think everyone just has a preference. Um, I think because I'm a light slamper, slamper, a light stamper and kind of a slow stamper as well. I think that uh, with how slow drying this ink is, it just lends itself a little bit more to um, my crafting style. Let me take a peek. I think I actually got a really decent impression, but I'm gonna do it just one more time, just for safety's sake and to make sure. It's sometimes hard to tell, um, because embossing ink is so light. It's sometimes hard to tell if you're getting a good impression, especially in those little detailed lines that are in the flowers. All right, and then one thing I like to do also is take my thumbs and kind of press into those areas where I know there's a tiny bit more detail. And I feel like that I actually got a lot, a really good impression there. So we are going to remove this guy and I just have to grab my embossing powder. So give me one second. I told you there were some things that I forgot to pull out. So you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit. So I am using, for reference, the WOW, it's a long name, Opaque Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder. It's my favorite white embossing powder, but there are a ton of white embossing powders out there that you can use. This one just happens to be my go-to. And it also comes, you can get it in a big, huge jar. So then you can put it in one of these lovely um, sandwich bins or holders or whatever they're called. And I just feel like it makes it a little easy, easier to cover images. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and heat set this. Um, once I turn my heat tool on, um, Zoom typically mutes it. 
a while back, I had some issues where it wasn't muting it. So if it's loud, I do apologize, but um, it will mute me. So if any sound gets garbled or sounds different, that's the reason why. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm not sure if it's even noticeable on screen since I am, it's basically currently right now white on white, but I can tell you it heat embossed beautifully. And I think you will be able to see that soon enough um, once we start to blend in all of the colors. So let's grab Oh, we were actually going to have some. So I am going to just put a couple of little tape loops on the back because I like to, like this is kind of powdery. Anyway, I like to tape my image down and then tape the stencils over top. Heather does it a different way. There's lots of different ways to ink blend. So um, you can really do it however you prefer. I'm gonna grab my trusty little um, ink stand there. And then we are going to use the layering stencils. Oh, and as you can see, I actually have a couple, another piece in there. But so on the back of the packaging, um, this gives you an idea of what it'll look like when it's all ink blended in. It's a great point of reference. So if you're wondering, um, what stencil does what. Um, you can just kind of match it up with the colors in here. And um, it's a really great reference if you're you know, trying to figure out your stencils. So as always, I do my stencils a little out of order. So today, the way that we're doing, and so all of our stencils are numbered in the upper left corner, but the way that I am doing it today, I'm doing stencil one, two, and then jumping to five. And then going back to three, four, and finishing with stencil six. So um, you are absolutely, of course, always free to uh, arrange your stencils however they work best for you. The way we have them is just a guideline, um, and but you are free to change it up. All right, I gotta find, I, I used up all of the pine cone washi tape uh, this past week. So I have a new washi tape out and of course I forgot to find the edge of it. <laughs> so give, bear with me here while I find it. I always find it um, a little harder on these smaller washi tapes to get going um, when you're first opening them up. I should have thought about this, but of course I didn't. And I'm kind of ripping it. There we go. Okay, let's get that little ripped piece off. You can use that to hold down a die or something. Okay, thanks guys. Glad you're enjoying this so far. I think you're gonna enjoy it even more as the colors start coming to life. So um, even though it's white on white, I can see the heat embossed lines really well um, at my angle. So um, I know that they are going to line up perfectly. And we won't have any issues with that. I want this to go a little bit more on the glass mat so it's holding it down a little bit more securely. Okay, and we are gonna start out with ballet slipper. And this is just a really nice light pink. I'm gonna use a bigger brush for these areas because um, 
I just want to buff in some color, not an overt amount of color. I'm going for a little bit of a lighter feel for the bouquet on this one. Uh, some really nice light pinks and corals. And we're going to go a little bit more bold on the greenery and the vase. So going pretty nice and light on the flowers. So there is the first stencil and it's just a perfect amount of light pink. I just love it. So now we're moving on to stencil number two. This is the next selection of flowers. And something to mention if you're new to our stencils, while I'm doing this, you'll notice I'm aligning the stencils to the heat embossed image. There are alignment guides in each corner, but those alignment guides are there for if you're wanting to use the stencils by themselves. They're not there for when you're using the stencil with a stamped, heat embossed, or a foiled image. So just a uh, good thing to note, good thing to keep in mind, alignment guides are for when you're using them alone. Now this set, um, while you could use the stencils alone, I think they're a little bit, uh, I think it's a little bit, it's, it would be a little abstract. You'd be missing some things. So I think that this one lends itself a little bit more to using the items together, or you can use just the stamps and color them, that color the flowers in yourself with whatever medium you prefer. All right, now I am breaking out the um, coral reef. And we're gonna do just another layer of pinky flowers, just a little bit of a different shade of pink, more of a red pink versus the pinky pink. And these will be a little bit deeper because Coral Reef is a little bit brighter than Ballet Slipper is, but I'm not trying to overdo it. I don't want it to be too extreme. So there is our second set of flowers. Oh, I'm just popping up to see a couple of comments and Mindy, we're so happy that you found um, our products too. We love to hear that. And we're happy that you're enjoying using them. Okay, so I am moving on to stencil six. This is where I've changed the order a little bit. Stencil six is just some flower details. And so the main thing to note here is you just really want to make sure that the details are within the flowers. I'm using a little bit of the heat embossing as a guide. Um, but mostly I'm just trying to make sure that um, those layers are, are within the flowers and not outside of it. Because if they're outside of it, you might accidentally cut them away and they might look a little funky. So you just really wanna make sure that those detail layers are just inside the um, flowers. All right. Real quick, I'm gonna leave coral reef here, but I am going to grab our small brushes. Um, I'm gonna wipe down my red one real quick because I feel like I used that on a much darker color the other day and I do not want to transfer much of that into coral reef or any of that into coral reef. So we're gonna give it a good rub down here. And I feel like that should be good. I feel like I've gotten the majority of any excess ink out of there. So this is where these small brushes come in handy. Now these have not released yet, friends. They will release uh, soon. I'm, we're hoping February, um, but it just is mostly dependent on when our shipment arrives. So um, we're excited about these. So we're really excited to get them into your hands. So here's hoping they come soon. But the great thing about these small ones is when you have a stencil, that is using two colors or, you know, it's, it's uh, going over two areas of different color. They're really great for getting in those areas. And then you don't have to mask as much. Now you could mask if you were using colors that weren't complementary, or if they accidentally blended together, they would make a, a yucky color. I probably would do a little masking, but because I'm using things in pretty much very similar color family, I'm not super worried about that. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and also wipe out my pink brush just to be on the safe side here. Debbie, Ballet Slipper and Coral Reef are my two favorite ink colors as well. Coral Reef probably edges out Ballet Slipper a little bit, <laughs> um, but I do, and I don't know why I dabbed off the Ballet Slipper. It really doesn't need to be dabbed off. It's so light. All right, just getting in there with a little bit more Ballet Slipper to get those details nice and finished and let's take a look at our finished flowers look at how pretty those are yes uh these brushes actually come in the boxes so um it, when you order a set um you get the really fun box and the box is almost as fun as the brushes are um i was thinking about how i was going to store these and i'm actually i actually was like they actually store beautifully in the package they come in and they fit perfectly in one of my Alex drawers. So I'm actually gonna store mine in the boxes they come in, which yay for versatile packaging. Okay. So we are making our way back over to, this is stencil number three. It's the vase and the baby's breath up there. I am not going to ink blend the baby's breath though. I'm actually going to just leave that white. So we're just going to ignore that up there. And I am just going to ink blend in the vase today. The vase is going to be super bold. We're going with really bold blues. We're going to start out with sapphire. Make, make sure I don't have any excess stargazer in here. Linda, the brushes are not available yet. Um, they will be hopefully very, very soon. So um, we're just waiting for our shipment to come in. So you're not missing out on them. They're just not here quite yet. I might need to get some new washi tape. This is not sticking down very well. Okay, so we are just gonna ink blend in this vase going to ink blend a little deeper just on one side of it to kind of create a little bit of like a shadow layer look, I guess. Okay. I go ahead and I am going to buff this one clean. So I buff off the embossing powder as well. And then, like I said, I am not going to ink blend in the, uh, baby's breath. So I am just going to leave that white and look at our image is coming together. Um, the U.S. shipments for Create and Connect are going out uh, this week. So, um, uh, and there is an update in the group. So uh, make sure you check that update. Okay. So we are on to stencil number four. And here is where I do a little bit of masking because I don't want the blue to mix in with those green leaves. So we are just going to grab a little bit of post-it tape and I'm gonna kind of try to make a little curve on it so that we can mask those leaves. And then I'll probably just do a little masking on this one too. So I'm gonna start with the um, the vase and we're gonna do the rest of the vase in Stargazer. So just these little lines here. And I'm just gonna blend them in. Stargazer, a little bit of Stargazer goes a long way. So I'm not gonna go crazy. Um, blending in that stargazer. Yeah, I'm however going to wipe it off. And I will clean my stencils a little bit more extensively when the live stream is over with, uh, I keep rubbing alcohol in a um, spray bottle on my desk. So I'll clean them off with that and then they're instantly dry and ready to go. Okay, so now let's take our little masking piece here 
And let's mask off this area here so that we don't get green in the blue either. Now this is where I'm going to use these smaller brushes. I'm gonna use the smaller brushes on the greenery because it's a little bit smaller and I wanna have a little bit more control over. So for this first layer, I am inking up in olive. <laughs> definitely once as a uh, create and connect boxes start arriving, it's definitely going to be a pink fresh party in some, in some houses along the way. I didn't worry too much about masking over here because I'm using a small brush so I can avoid getting any green ink in there. I just, this one right here is a little bit harder to avoid, to avoid that. So the little bit of masking is nice in this section here. All right. Just a little bit of deepening right at the base of each of those leaves. Great thing about the, these smaller brushes is you really do get a lot more control over where you wanna deepen your shades of color. It's really nice. Okay, you can pull those off. Oh, that sounds like fun, Jennifer. Okay. We just have one final stencil left here. So there is the reveal with those leaves. And I think what we have left is just a little bit of leaf detail and just some final, just a little bit of final greenery here. Okay. Just getting those nice and lined up. So what I'm lining up here is there are these little pieces right here that haven't been colored in yet. So I'm aligning those with the heat embossing. And then basically the rest of the stencil falls into place when you do that. And so that's typically what I'm looking for um, is somewhere that I can line up the stencil in a couple of places. And then if it's not, and then if there isn't an uncolored area to line it up, then just basically arranging it so it's within the um, the detail area is uh, the other way that I do that. All right, I'm gonna grab my other green, my other green small brush here. And for this final layer, we are doing evergreen, which is our deepest shade of green. It's in a different color family than olive, but um, we're loving the combo of those together. And I thought the really nice deep shade of green will be, would be really nice with how light I made the flowers. And this stencil is relatively easy one to clean in or to color in because it's just some details here. I am going to wipe this one clean to help get the embossing line, the embossed lines clean underneath it. And there is our finished result. Wipe my brush off. I'm gonna find a clean area and just kind of gently go over that to make sure there's not any area that's icky. And look at how pretty that turned out. Um, I'm really, I actually am really excited about how this turned out. All right. Let me uh, clean off my desk a little bit. I'll clean, I'll fully clean my stencils later. So I'm just gonna set those aside. Just gonna remove some things off my desk here. And I am going to just wipe off some of this ink that I got on my glass mat so I don't ac accidentally get it on anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and set this aside for now. Um, I want to, um, I think I want to stamp the sentiment. So I gotta just grab a small piece of um, scrap cardstock. So give me one second.
and my mini misty. Okay, so here's this. I'm going to stamp the sending love sentiment from um, the same stamp set. And I think, I think I'm going to do it in Stargazer. So rather than detail black or heat emboss, I think I'm going to do a coordinating color. Let's see. We'll see if I like it. If I don't, we can always change our minds. We've got plenty of time today. That actually went a little quicker than I thought it would. I typically would prefer to use a ink cube when stamping such a delicate sentiment, but I have the full size over here with me. So we're just gonna stamp it a couple times lightly and hope I don't overdo it. That actually looks really nice right there. So there is our sentiment in Stargazer versus Black. It's always kind of a nice little change when you do them. And I think they'll look really nice together, actually. Okay. I will clean that off a little bit later. I'll set it over in my areas that need to be cleaned. So let's go ahead and die cut these. So we will start with this big guy. I need a couple pieces of tape. I should do. And I'm just gonna take my time to get it nice and lined up. Glad you guys are liking our new release. We're really excited with our January release. Um, I feel like it has a lot of really great things in it. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna, my die cut machine is just a little off screen, so I'll be right back with it. Oh shoot. <laughs> so I total rookie mistake. I forgot to remove my little uh my little tape loops from the back. So it was um sticking to everything. That was dumb. I don't <laughs> oopsies. It's okay. I think in the end it still worked out fine. So there is our lovely bouquet all cut out. And then I'm going to set this aside because I can probably cut some additional layers out of that. And actually, I am going to switch out because I like to uh, save my big cut, my big cutting plates, some wear and tear when I'm cutting small things. And I'm just going to use um, my, little my little teeny die cut machine here to cut out the sentiment. I'm probably going to cut out a few layers as well. I didn't do that. Uh, I didn't do that as prep work. I kind of forgot about it, but I think we have plenty of time. So um, I think it'll be okay if we just do it live. Okay. I load it in there. Catherine is asking how many sets of the brushes we have. I actually currently only have two, but I'm requesting four more because I one, I need to photograph them clean uh, for our pro product photos. And then the goal is to have two for each color family, um, other than like browns and grays, because I don't even blend with browns and grays very often. So I don't feel the need to have two for that color family. But um, the goal for me is to have um, one for uh, the light and mid, and then one for the two deeper tones in each color family. 
but that's just me. That is just, you know, Heather and I use our stuff almost commercially. You by no means have to do it that way. It's sufficient if you really want to, if you had just one per, maybe you have one for pinks and reds, uh, one for oranges and yellows because they're close enough and so on and so forth. They clean off pretty easily. So um, completely up to you. Um, but I have put a request in for four more sets <laughs> of, of brushes. There we go. All right, let's get one more layer. And that is why, this is why friends, I keep all of these random chunks that um, I cut stuff away for. I know it might seem silly or like ridiculously frugal, but look at how many layers I am able to get from that panel where that we cut, that I cut the flowers from, so. And I feel like three should probably be plenty. So we can go ahead and do a little bit of desk cleanup here. All right, and let's go ahead and grab our fantastic little, uh, this is our new dual tip um, uh, embellishment tool. Uh, on one side, there's a craft pick, which is what I'm just about to use. On the other side, there's a wax tip for uh, like a jewel picker. And the other day I got annoyed because I kept opening the wrong end. I went ahead and threw a enamel dot on the side that has the craft pick so that I know which, which end I am using. So um, I know now the one with the matching enamel dot on the end is the craft pick and it helps get out these little chads that cut out from the sentiments. We will use this again when we go to embellish, but it's a great dual purpose tool. It becomes two tools in one, so you don't have to have both. Uh, and then we just, and it's pretty. <laughs> so that tool will be um, going to <clears throat> our Create and Connect, Create and Connect event attendees in February 1st, and then we will be releasing it not too long after that. I think it's just dependent upon when our final full shipment comes in. All right, oopsies. And I am just gluing and stacking these sentiment pieces together. So the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I love how thin these cut, but they're not easy to get foam tape behind. So I have found that stacking is your best friend on the, some, the way that we do some of our sentiments, the way that we cut them so intricately. Um, stacking is definitely kind of your best friend on that. All right. Okay, get those lined up there. Sorry, I gotta wipe my nose. I've got kind of a little, kind of a bit of a runny nose. I think my allergies are getting the best of me lately. Okay, there we have our sentiment. So I'm gonna put away done this. Now I pre die cut the background panel, but I will pull out the pieces and show you here. Um, so I cut the panel with the largest stitched rectangle. And then I used just the inner die to the inner spiral circle die to cut this interesting little piece here on each side. Um, I, so I didn't color in, there were dyes to color in these, but I chose to leave them white. 
And it, what you probably can't see very well in video is that they're heat embossed, so you can see the detail, um, but they're not, um, they are, they're not colored in because I wanted them to look more like baby's breath than anything else. So you could use gray if you wanted to add a little bit of color into those, but I still wanted them to have that white film. I think once you see the pictures, once I get photos taken of this and, and up to, updated, you'll see a little bit more of what's going on up there. Hey Barb, I don't think we have storage sleeves in, in our, our plans. So um, we tend to just, well, at least I just tend to keep everything in the packaging. I just cut the top off um, and leave it as that. So I'll have this lovely little piece that peeks out. We'll have this lovely sentiment. All right. So one thing I am going to do is I want some gold to peek through this spiral circle because I just think that will be a nice little addition to the back. So I went ahead and I pre-cut a piece of this like kind of nice gold glitter. Um, paper and I'm just going to glue my background down to it with some liquid glue. So this glitter paper, I'll say this, um, this glitter paper that I have here is kind of that malleable glitter paper and it is not great for doing intricate die cutting with. You can do it, but it's kind of a pain. Um, so when you have a more malleable glitter paper like this one, and you can tell it in the way that it ends and the way it feels. Um, it's more, it's kind of better for uh, peeking behind things. And like it can, it can do the standard rectangle cut, but I probably wouldn't have done this die from it. So instead I did that die from white cardstock that I knew would cut really well. And then that gold glitter is just going to peek out from behind to really make that spiral circle detail pop. <laughs> I know a lot of people said they saw the spiral circle and they were kind of like, eh, meh. I, it's like my favorite thing from the release. I'm like pretty much obsessed with it. I have to force myself to put it down. Um, currently, I have a feeling I'm going to be using it a lot in the coming months. I just love all the different ways you can use it. Like, it's just fantastic. Um, and I think once you add this on top and it just kind of peeks behind that floral vase, it's just gonna be really lovely. So I do wanna pop this up with foam, but I have to create one of my foam panels. So let me grab the, the items I need for doing that and we will create a foam panel together. I have been sucking on um, pre-creating my foam panels lately. So I've kind of just been doing them as I go along, um, which means I don't have them prepped very often when it comes time to do a live or a video. So you're gonna get to see me do it in real time. This is just a piece of white craft foam. You can get them anywhere, at your local craft store. I think Walmart carries them. Uh, you can find them on Amazon for relatively inexpensive. Um, so pretty much you can find this kind of foam anywhere. And then this is just five inch score tape. Um, I typically get it on Amazon. Sometimes I get it directly from the company, which is ScorePal. Um, if they have uh, like a coupon code or a discount or a sale going on, sometimes they have the better price, but typically I find a better price on Amazon. I also believe a couple of other online retailers sell it as well. And it's just five inch um, score tape. And this is kind of my most cost, efe cost efficient, frugal way of creating a full panel of foam so that I don't have a saggy card because I don't, I don't like saggy cards. I was actually just going through a bunch of old cards before I knew this trick and I was just using foam tape and I could see where kind of some of the areas of the cards were a little saggy. So um, 
I like this. I like this little trick here. So now I kind of prepped a few different color card bases because I wasn't sure uh, which color I think that this would look best on. I'm kind of leaning towards pink because there's already quite a bit of blue on the card. But I have not fully made my decision on that yet. So there it is on pink. And then let's try it on the blue. The blue is kind of striking though. Um, hmm. I know I'm not gonna do white, so we can nix the white one. So this is more of a sapphire blue. And then this one is, wow, I'm sorry, that navy blue really kind of throws off my lighting here, doesn't it? There we go, <laughs> I'll take that off screen. Okay, I think navy looks almost too, almost like it's black. So we're gonna nix navy. So I think it's between uh, sapphire and pink here. So I'm gonna pull that out. I think I'm gonna, I think I agree guys. I think, I think the pink's real pretty, I do. I think the blue is more striking and I think I'm gonna go with that. All right, so the blue seems to really be throwing off my exposure. So I'm gonna try to keep it as covered as much as possible um, and get this panel glue, uh, adhered down. Okay, there we go. All right, and so you noticed before earlier, I was kind of fluffing the images on the uh, um, the flower bouquet. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, just to give it a little bit more dimension. And also the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of foam tape behind here, but just glue it down normally here. So just the flowers kind of pop up a little bit off of the background. So let's go ahead and grab a couple pieces of foam. Doesn't need to be a lot, just a couple to put in there. And grab my liquid glue. Just put some liquid glue on the bottom. Try and do this one-handed. There we go, got it. <laughs> And I'm just gonna get this adhered to the front. Ooh. There we go. And then we will just go ahead and glue the sentiment down directly. Because it's so intricate, we'll just glue it right directly to the card. Okay. Oh, awesome here, Kathy. Hopefully you enjoy using it. Okay. Last things last, let's get a little bit of embellishing here. So I think I am for sure going to add a couple of uh, pink jewels to the centers of some of the flowers. I think that'll just be a nice little addition. Maybe just one small guy up here. I think we'll call that good on the flowers. And then I know I wanna use some of the sapphire gems to match the background here. So we've got pink, ballet, we got ballet slipper jewels, sapphire, and probably glacier. You know, and I'm not, I may have to grab my refill 
because I'm not seeing any of the larger sapphire jewels. There might be some down in there that I just can't see. Um, so give me one second to grab my refill real quick. I'm making a mess. <laughs> I'm making a huge mess. All right, sorry about that. Give me one second. I just, so here's my refill bag. I see big ones in here. There's probably, there probably are some larger ones in that little jar. I just can't grab them. So this will just be easier <laughs> or I can't find them currently. So this way will just be easier. Okay, so I know I want to do a little trio down here. And then one probably up here. Okay. Well, maybe actually just a, not a trio, but just two. There are too many jewels in there. I can't decipher between them. There we go. And then maybe just two little ones over here. Perfect. There we go. Let's get these closed so I don't knock them all over my desk and make a huge mess, bigger mess than they've already made anyway. And we will get these glued down and we are done with our card today. Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> I now have glue on the tip of that jewel. It should be okay. I lost my brain there for a minute. A weird little paper fuzzy. I don't know if anybody else notices, but so it's very cold in Minnesota currently. Um, and when it gets cold like this, our air is really dry. And our air is just really dry in the winter anyway. But I feel like when I die cut things um, in when the when it's dry like this, it's just like you get more of those paper fibers, like little small paper fibers everywhere. I don't notice it as much in the summer when it's a little more humid. I have to get used to it because I'm moving to a uh, mountainous desert climate back in Montana. So I guess I'm going to have to get used to it. But and so there is my card for today. I am pretty thrilled with how this turned out. I wasn't really sure how it was going to go, but um, I am. I really am loving the colors, and I think it's a fun, um, different take. All right. Well, that's my card for today, friends. We made it through. I even kind of ended a little early on the top on um, today, uh, which is unusual for me. <laughs> I'm normally late. Um, okay, let me go ahead and get this switched back around to me. Give me one second. Um, there we go. It's clicking the wrong button. Oh, and I did it again. I'm sorry. Okay, back to me. There we go. Barb, I don't know. I don't have my phone. I'm not sure where my phone is. <laughs> I'm somewhere in my house. But it's really cold here. Um, I think it was like negative two uh, the last time I looked on my phone. And that doesn't even factor in our wind chill, wind chill factor. So um, uh, that's it's cold today. Patty, I didn't even think about putting a humidifier in my craft room. Duh, I have a humidifier in my bedroom because I have such, I have dry eye syndrome. You know, that's a great idea. I'll have to think, I'll have to remember that and grab one for my craft room. Okay, we have a winner. Congratulations to Lori Andy. You won today's $15 gift card code. 
All you have to do to claim your pies is email me. My email is leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. There's no H on the end of my name, so it's just L-E-A. And give me about two to three business days to reply back because you do get a lot of emails. Um, so hopefully I should get it back to you by the end of this week. Um, someone, cat, cat. Um, I'm moving back to Montana um, sometime between June and September. We're currently building a house. Um, and if weather cooperates over in Montana, they're going to start building or start digging out the foundation of our house next month. So it's kind of starting to get real that this is actually going to be a thing. We're actually going to be moving. Um, so, um, sometime, um, between June and September. So I don't exactly know when I'm moving yet. <laughs> um, so, uh, Barb, thank you. I'm feeling a bit better. Um, uh, just in case, uh, for those that don't know, I had kind of a weird allergy attack last week. Um, and I had like red hives and welts and I was real itchy all over and, um, I'm doing better with, uh, taking kind of a combination of Claritin in the morning and Benadryl at nighttime, uh, doing some oatmeal soak and lotion stuff. So, but I am feeling better. Uh, still a little itchy here and there, trying to, I think, figure out the culprit of what happened. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think I did. And so here's hoping when I get that fully out of my system, all will be okay. Um, what part of Montana? Um, we're moving to a very small town called Anaconda, Montana. It's centrally located in the state, 30 minutes away from Butte, Montana, which is right about smack in the center of Montana, and then about an hour and a half or so away from Missoula, which is where I'm from, which is um, kind of the western side of Montana. All right, friends, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, so lives this week, we have Scrapbooking Live on Thursday, same time, 12 noon, here on, um, uh, here on YouTube. This week is with Kathleen. So it's going to be a good one. And then friends, craft hour is back this week. So join us on Saturday, same time, 12 noon central time here on our YouTube channel with the fabulous Jeff Lindberg. And I am just going to put out there who our first guest of the year is. It is because I think she's still here. I think she's here in our chat. The first guest of craft hour this year is Cheryl Espy, brand new um, card design team member. Um, uh, so we're excited that she's going to be um, joining us for craft hour. You get to craft with her and Jeff and hang out and socialize. It's going to be a great time. So uh, we got a week full of lives. So super exciting. Um, we're excited that Craft Arrow will be back. We've actually got it planned for the first half of the year in full. So be proud of us. <laughs> so we hope you'll join us. The best way to know about our lives is to sign up for our, e our emails. So if you haven't done that yet, you can do that on our website, pinkforstudio.com. A little thing does pop up. If you have a pop-up blocker, if you just scroll down to the bottom of our site, you'll see a place to sign up there. And then you also can check our Instagram stories as well. We put all of our information in there. All right, friends, have a great day. Thanks so, thanks so much for joining me and hopefully we'll see you on Thursday and on Saturday. Bye.